well and the same way the presence of the lord will be with you when you speak the word when you decree a thing this year it will come to pass in jesus name first kings chapter 8 first kings chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 56 and verse 57 first kings chapter 8 verse 56 blessed be the lord praise the lord with me that has given rest unto his people israel according to all that he promised that he promised there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of moses a servant the lord is saying that every promise he has made to you if you didn't get it last year you are getting it this year of all his good promises that you have promised uh, begin to mark them down this year is a year of fulfillment that as he said by the hand of Moses, as he said by the hand of all these people that wrote by inspiration in the word of God, all those promises of a yes and amen in our lives in Jesus' name. Verse 57, the Lord our God be with us. That's all we need. That's all we need. This is a year from January till December. And then from this year to the end of our lives, that's all we need. Well, we don't worry about Satan, about demons, about evil spirits, about enemies, about detractors, about persecutors, about sickness, about whatever. All we need is the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there will be the fullness of joy. And your life will be full in Jesus' name. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers let him not leave us nor forsake us the lord will do it Amen. judges we're looking at judges chapter 20 chapter 6 judges chapter 6 whatever assignment the lord has given us this year all we need is the presence of the lord you know sometimes god gives you an assignment and it appears like how will i do that how will that come to pass do they think I am, you know, a giant in the Lord, a giant in faith? How could they tell me to do that? They are overreaching me. They are kind of lifting me above my level. Well, there's no level you will not get to this year. Because you'll be the head, you will not be the tail. And whatever challenges come, if God gives you a challenge, it's because you didn't know he had promoted you you know sometimes we don't know we don't know that god has done that or when somebody comes to us and tells us something say me how can that be it's like you know the lord told elijah he said elijah i want you to go to that place in zarephath i've commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee and the widow woman did not know anything and the lord said just go i have commanded her you know sometimes the lord has commanded you to do something and you didn't know you didn't know that and then i come to you as a prophet of god and i say hey come on now get up and do this i say pastor let me pray like the lord has not spoken to me the lord has commanded already and then elijah came and while the woman was gathering sticks elijah said hey woman can you get me some water to drink there Following what the Lord had said, I've commanded that widow woman that he, she is the one to sustain thee. And while she was going, said, hey, please, when you are coming, please uh, bring here some meal because I've not eaten today and feed me here. And the, the woman did not know, could not sense that the commandment of the Lord was upon her to do that. The point I'm telling you is something above you, something beyond you that you don't think that is for you to do and yet the lord said i have commanded that widow woman and she didn't know and then she said man of god i don't have any meal in fact this one i'm cooking now is the very last one once i eat this with my son then we are dead because there's nothing left and the lord and the man of god said go and do as i have said the commandment of the lord is upon you and when you obey that commandment provision will come from on high because that cruise of oil and that container of meal will not dry up until the famine will cease in the land and then she went and did according to the word of the man of god and then multiplication came multiplication is coming yeah. uh, don't worry about i didn't know that before i didn't know i was to do that the lord commanded you but you didn't know and i am here to come and tell you here is the commandment of the lord for you as you rise up and do it miracles yeah. supernatural things will happen in your life in jesus name 
until things will change and times that the world will change but you'll be living in the prosperity of the Lord I'm coming now to this Judges chapter 6 Judges chapter 6 verse 15 and 16 and he said unto him O oh, O oh, oh, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And this is Gideon. The Lord said, the Lord sent an angel and said, go and get this done. And he said, how can I do that? I'm the least. I'm the smallest. Our family is poor. And as if that were not enough, I'm even the least in this poor family. And then verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. That settles the whole matter. It says, even when you feel poor, or you feel incapable, when you feel unqualified, when you feel you don't have the wherewithal to be able to get this done, the Lord said, I will be with you. And then it says, And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You'll have the victory in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Our purging in his perceived presence. Our purging in his perceived presence. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. Here was Isaiah now. Isaiah had been serving the Lord, just like all of us here, without exception. Brothers and sisters, you'll be serving the Lord as pastors, as preachers, as ministers, as servants of the living God, in one capacity or the other. And yet you come here now to this place, and the Lord is going to give you a new commission, a new assignment. And as the Lord gives you, you're not going to draw back and say, but I, I think I've done enough. Listen, here is Isaiah. Here was Isaiah. Isaiah had ministered from chapter 1 to chapter 5. But to who did he minister? Just to the nation and to the people of Judah. And a new assignment was about to come. And before that new assignment, there will be a revelation of the presence of the Lord was him. And it was in the year that King Uzziah died that this happened. And he saw the Lord, and he saw him seated upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. He's saying there's no part of the world you cannot go. My glory is there. You know some people, when the Lord wants them to go to this part of the world, this part of the earth, this part of the continent, and this part of wherever it is, they're looking at what they're reading. They're looking at the newspapers. The newspapers are different from the Bible. They look, they're listening to the radio. What you hear from the radio is different from the voice of the angels. Or they're looking at, you know, this is an, on the internet and this one. What you hear on the internet? All the Google that you, that you see on the internet is not the voice of the angel. Some people, their source of information is only what they find in the valley, what they find in the tunnel of darkness. But it is when you see the revelation of the Lord himself, he says, I'll tell you another thing. The whole earth is full of his glory. You're not going to hear that from, you know, the news they're giving, they're casting at this time. When the Lord gives an assignment and he says, this is what you do. The place to get your news is on your knees. And the place to get the revelation of the place the Lord is sending you is on your knees. And it says, it's the whole earth that is full of my glory. And then on the post of the dust moved at the voice of him that cried. And the, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, tell me, 
who is me. He saw the glory of God. He saw the majesty of God. He saw the exaltation of the Lord Almighty. And he saw all these angels as they bowed down, as they worshipped the Lord. And he cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And then they said, what they saw, that the whole earth is full of his glory. And then he saw himself, how unqualified he was. When you see the per when you have the perception of the presence of the Lord, you might see your corruption. You might see the defilement. You might see some backsliding. You might see some shortcoming. That's not to run away from the Lord. Oh, the Lord is so holy. I'm so unholy. That doesn't mean you're going to run away from the Lord. And the Lord is so high. I'm so low. That doesn't mean that you're going to be dreaming away from the presence of the Lord. The more you see of his glory, the more you see of his honor, the more you come to the Lord and say, Lord, look at me. I'm not worthy to be in your sight. You, can, you are going to do something for me. He said, woe unto voice me, for I am unclean. And because I'm a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from up the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. The fire of the Lord will come upon your mouth. And then inside you, the fire will be burning. And then you'll be able to tell the gospel, be able to preach the gospel of boldness and with fire in Jesus' name. He laid it on my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. There's purging here today. There's pardon here today. There's cleansing here today. All the defilement, the Lord, by his fire, will purge everything away in Jesus' name. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Now that I'm prepared, I'm pardoned, I'm purged, I'm purified, I'm sanctified, I'm made holy, and the Lord has put his word, his fire, in my bones, in my heart, in my life. Then said I, here am I, send me. Can we say that together? Here am I, send me. Can you say that again? Say that again. When you have the perception of the glory of the Lord and the perception of the presence of the Lord, it's going to ask, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then you're able to say, because of the pardon, because of the purging, and because of the purifying, you're able to say, here am I, send me. Job chapter 42, Job chapter 42, I'm reading from verse 1. When you have the presence of the Lord, you see the presence of the Lord, and you experience that presence of the Lord, it's going to lead to purging, purifying, sanctification, and holiness. Job chapter 42, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare unto me. Listen to this, verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. He perceived now the presence of the Lord. I see you close now. When I didn't see you, I said a lot of things. My friends said a lot of things. We argued back and forth. They said, no, you must be a sinner. I said, no, but I'm all right. And then as we were arguing like that, I said, which of you can, you know, accuse me of anything? I even told them, you are comforters of, of no value, of no profit. But now I stop all that because my eyes now see you. I perceive the presence of the Lord. Now, because of that perception, see what happens in verse 6. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. That's what I'm telling you. That when you really perceive the presence of the Lord, you'll see what needs to be cleansed away from your life. You will see how dirty you are. You will see how defiled you are. You will see how unacceptable in the sight of the Lord you are. And then you'll go to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb. And then the Lord will cleanse you afresh in Jesus' name. That's why we're telling the Lord in chapter 34 of Job. Job chapter 34. And I'm reading from verse 31 and verse 32. Job chapter 34, verse 31. Surely 
It is me to be said unto God. When you see the Lord, when you hear the Lord, when you perceive the presence of the Lord, it is right, it is necessary to say unto the Lord, verse 31, I have borne chastisement. I would not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. When you see the presence of the Lord and you know that he's very near, you are hearing his voice and he's pointing to your heart and then he's bringing that conviction upon you. You're saying, oh Lord, now I understand. Now I understand. I thought everything was all right. I thought I was up there. I thought I was even perfect. But now, Lord, I'm telling you, now that I see the presence of the Lord so near, that which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, what next? I will do no more. If I have done iniquity, I, I didn't know that was wrong, but in your presence now, I can see that was wrong. I didn't know that that was unacceptable. In your presence now, I see that is unacceptable. I didn't know that this will offend you, but now in your presence, I see that that is offensive. And that which I see not teach you me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. You know, it is when you see that presence of the Lord and it says, I'm now with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And the Spirit of God impresses that on your heart. That's when you are telling the Lord, oh Lord, I need purging. I need cleansing. I need purifying. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, Second Chronicles chapter 15, I'm reading there from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Odej. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and, I, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you. What an information. What an info, what a revelation that the, this man of God gave unto Asa. If that's all I can tell you, that the Lord is with you. I've told you something. I said, I've told you something. You know, you thought Satan was with you. I said, no, the Lord is with you. You thought the enemies are too near. I said, no, the Lord is with you. You, you thought my problems, they keep close to me like my clothes. I said, no, the Lord is with you. I came here to tell you tonight, the Lord is with you. You know, you can dry your tears and forget your sorrows and forget all those problems and forget all your heartaches and, you know, dropping your head as if, you know, the whole world is falling on you because I came to tell you, because God told me to tell you that the Lord is with you. Yeah. He will never leave you. Yeah. He will never forsake you. Yeah. And because of that presence of the Lord with you, you can do virtually anything for the Lord. Yeah. There's no assignment too great for you. There's no challenge too great for you. You know, all the, all the thoughts have been having, and all the devil has been whispering to you and is saying, ah, you have lost the Lord. The Lord has lost you. You're not far away from the Lord. The devil is a liar. Because the Lord said, I am with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You are going to find these days we are together that when you open your mouth like this and you ask for anything, Test it, test it. You're going to discover the Lord will say, yes, I'm going to show you I love you and with you, he'll give it unto you. Yeah. And so, this man of God told Asa in this verse 2, and he said, the Lord is with you. While ye be with him, if you seek him, he will be, be found of you. If ye forsake him, I'll never forsake him. If ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long time, a long season, Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord, unto the Lord God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. And then we're told in verse 7, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your, for your work shall be rewarded. Your work will be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words, and the, pro, and the prophecy of Odej, the prophet, he took courage. Take courage. I said take courage. I said take courage. Look up here. I want you to look at the person beside you. Now, those who are beside one, that just one person, two, together. Are you all right? You understand? Okay. Take is viral. Just take viral. 
Have you done that? Okay, the other person, take it back. Have you done that? Take courage. Praise the Lord. You, you, you know some people, you know what they do? When the Lord said, take courage. They go there, they kneel down, they're shaking their head, they're doing this. Oh God, courage. Oh God, courage. Take courage. It's there, take it. I said it's there, take it. You know, that's what the Lord is saying. He said this year, there's no discouragement. This year, there's no depression. Anytime discouragement is trying to come, discouragement, then what do you do? I didn't hear you. You take it. When you take it, it's yours already. You are going to be courageous in Jesus' name. Amen. When you hear the prophecy of the word, when you hear the promise of the word of God, the promise is there to remind you, you have no reason sitting down there and crying. You have no reason sitting down there and mourning. And the thing, the thing is there very near you. And it says, what? Take it up. Take courage. And we're told, Asa did what? Is such a courage and he put away the abominable idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and read and renewed the altar of the Lord and was that was before the porch of the Lord. That is what he did. That's what he did when he saw that perception. When he had that perception of the presence of the Lord was him, he said. I don't have any reason sitting back down there and, you know, mourning and crying and being sorrowful as if something bad has happened. that cannot be, you know, kind of reorganized and changed. Therefore, he took courage and then he went for a cleansing. That's what the Lord is saying. When you have that perceived presence of the Lord, you take courage and there should be a cleansing. Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, the purging. That we have in his perceived presence. Malachi. We're looking at chapter 3 from verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come in his temple. The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come in his temple. When you have that perception of his coming of his presence and of his nearness with you. It says, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. And then in verse 2, but who shall abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller's soul. And he shall sage as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. It says that when he comes in his presence, and then you sense and you perceive that that presence of the, of the Lord is there, he will purify and refine you. So that, that ye may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. It will happen in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the purpose of his perpetual presence. The purpose of his perpetual presence. The Lord said he'll be with you, he'll be with me, he'll be with us. He will be with this church. Every church named Deeper Life in anywhere, any corner of the world, any village, any local government, any region, any state. Deeper Life in any country of Africa, beyond Africa, the Lord will be with us. This year, you will see the presence of the Lord. This year, you experience the presence of the Lord. And when that presence is there, impossibilities will become possible. Now, the purpose of his perpetual presence. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. Exodus 3 verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? 
that I shall bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, without any shadow of doubt, I will be with thee. When some assignment is given to you, and you're asking, Who am I that I could do that? Who am I that I can fit into that? Who am I that I should accomplish that? And the Lord is saying, All you need to be able to do the impossible. Let me put it another way. All you need to do to be able to do the undoable, the things that people think you cannot do, that no man can do that. All you need is the presence of the Lord, and the Lord will be with you. He says, Certainly, certainly, verse 12, I will be with thee, and they shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth. The people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. What's the purpose of the presence of the Lord? To be able to bring the people of God out of captivity. Through your messages, through your prayers, through your counseling, through your interaction, through your fellowship, many people are going to come out of captivity this year. Out of their sin, many people are going to get saved through you. Out of their sicknesses, many people are going to get healed through you this year in Jesus' name. He says, you'll bring the people out of the house of bondage. Chapter 4, Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of his slow tongue. Wait there for a moment. You know, sometimes, uh, look up brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes we cheat ourselves because we don't understand how God works. For example, if you listen to a preacher and the preacher is, you know, talking like, it's not talking like you expected. You know, the way he talks, and maybe that's his natural way of talking. Maybe it's a little bit, you know, afraid of just a crowd like this. And then he talks slow, and then he, you know, it's of his slow speech, and then of his slow tongue. Some people don't think that anything can happen when somebody is talking like that, but anybody who comes here to speak during this Congress, something good will happen to you. You may talk fast, you may talk slow. He may pronounce some words like, you know, we pronounce it in other parts of the world, not like we pronounce it in Nigeria. Whatever the pronunciation, it will send blessing to your life. Amen. And whatever the way of talking, is, that's not the important thing. God said, Moses, I know the way you talk. And then you are belittling yourself and you're saying, I cannot speak of a slow speech. You know, sometimes we go to other places and when we go there and we, you know, see the way the people are and they're not familiar with the way we talk, we kind of talk in a way that, you know, we're wondering ourselves, is anything happening there? Is anything happening there? Something is happening there. Anywhere you go, just talk the way you want to talk and the way you are given the grace to talk. And I'm telling you, miracles will follow in Jesus' name. And Moses was concerned about that. Moses thought, if I talk this way, if I talk my way, these people are not going to, how can you face Pharaoh and face all the magicians? If a person is talking the way I am talking, how can you have victory? The way you are talking is all right. I said the way you are talking is all right. And the victory and the deliverance will come to the people of God, even through you in Jesus' name. Let me help you. Don't compare yourself with another person. That's why God said, Moses, don't talk like this. I know your brother Aaron is there. I know he can talk more than you, but the power is not there. The power is on you. And, and the Lord okay, if you want him, I give him to you. Let him go with you. And then let's see what will happen. And then Moses, the stammerer, Moses, the slow talker, he went to the mount for only 40 days. By the time he came back, and Aaron was in charge, the good talker, he was in charge. The eloquent talker, he was in charge. The fluent speaker, he was in charge. Before, they came, before he came back, what happened? The fluent talker has raised an idol for the people. And Moses, the one slow of speech, when he came, he said, uh -uh, Aaron, better speaker, what have you done? Well, he said, you know what? I couldn't take courage when you went away. 
The people told me, if you don't raise up an idol for us, you are gone. You know the people now. You are the only one, slow talker, that can handle these people. Me, fast talker, good talker. I only talk. I cannot handle them. That's all. Don't compare yourself with Aaron. The way you are talking, that's good for you. And it's good for us, church. I said it's good for us, church. And so it was that Moses with his slow talk that went back to God. And with his speech, his slow talk, he said, God, help these people. Don't destroy them. God says, slow talker, I hear you. I will not destroy them. Is a slow talker, the one that didn't know how to talk, that had power with God and power with man. Power over Pharaoh, power over the Egyptians. So, whatever gift God has given you, don't belittle it. Accept it the way it is, it will work miracle. Yeah. And so, here we're told that he was saying, I'm of a slow speech and of a slow tongue. 